Hey guys, Josh here. Welcome back to another video. Today's video, I want to talk about Bart Prater. That may be one of the most hot techniques on internet recently. You may have seen it once or twice on social medias if you guys are on it. This is a video I'm going to explain about the structure of Bart Prater, what it works, then how you set up, and kind of like a basic way to finish. It's a really efficient technique. Let's start with understanding the mechanism of the Bharat Prater. It is a reverse Kimura. So Kimura, that's making a two arm look like this, then some medium person's shoulder, like a rotator cuff, this side. That's Kimura. Bharat Prater, we're going to apply pressure our person's shoulder, like in front of part of the shoulder. This is the way we're going to submit. That's why in order to do the movement, we need to make a lock first. So reverse Kimura lock. So I'm grabbing here and here, this lock. So I clean his elbow like this. And then I start locking his arm. Once it's done, it, it could be difficult to close the elbow like this. Then we've got leverage, apply pressure here. That's why whenever you can find a situation that you can lock your partner's elbow with opening, you can make Barrett Prater. But on the other hand, if your partner closes their elbows or put their arm to the other side, it's not a big Bharat Prater. So first thing first, I want you to find a way to set up the frame. Right, next one, how to make frame in terms of locking a person's arm or being isolated. Then this is similar to triangle lock. Triangle lock, we usually trap a person's neck and arm just like this. Then we can set up a submission, choke or hold. But on the other hand, Bharat Prater, we use our legs on your partner's arm, like one side of your partner's upper body. So from the previous phase, we've got a reverse kimura like this, right? From this position, I'm going to lie down. By the time I lie down, I put this leg over his right shoulder. This is a really unique part. I want you to see that I start using my legs. That means I use the four parts of my body, arms and legs, to lock his right arm like this. Then from this position, we want to make the tighter frame in order to control partner. First thing, the arm. This needs to be really tight on his arm. So the time I do the movement, I get my elbow right behind his elbow. This time you can see my elbows are like this. So this is too shallow to lock. That's why I shake it in. Ideally, I want to place my elbow joint right behind the elbow joint, like this. Once it's done, as a dominant frame. Ed can no longer close his elbow or hide his arm. This is one reason Bart Prater is really strong. Most of the time, when we hit something, as an instinct, we like to pull out our arm. But this situation, it's completely counterintuitive. Even though he wants to pull out his arm, it's been locked with my arm, like this. So, I want you to keep in mind that once you make it, opponent is gonna be way harder to escape from this position. Then next step is by using our legs to get our person's upper body away. So this is kind of like a stack pass situation. If I just only lie down on my back like this, it is really easy to drive his weight on me like this, to smash like this. Even though I have isolated arm, I have not that much chance to finish it. That's why I started using my legs. Maybe I have to fall on the mat. I may keep my legs in the free like this, or maybe a triangle lock like this. So I use my legs separately. First one, this one. I want to step his hip bone like this. This is how I keep his hips away like this. So it's getting harder for him to get close to my side as long as I keep this one. Then the top leg, I have to use it in multiple ways. Here, yeah, similar to the last leg, I push his hips away. This one, I want to keep his shoulder away. That's the first thing. Plus, I have to control his upper body as well. He may push up. When the time it happens, my frame is getting shallower, something like this. I make it look like this, but if I don't control his shoulder, he can raise his head up like this. Then my frame is getting shallower. That's why in terms of controlling his posture, I want to clamp his shoulder, like using back on my knee or the hamstring, like this. This is a very important movement. Sometimes people forget about it. Since they really focus on like pushing a person's head or like using the leg, it's really shallow. Then opponent can escape. To avoid this one. So put, your, put the back of your knee on the shoulder and clamp. 
Now, I want you to take a look at the angle as well. So this is for his shoulder, right? not against his neck or his head. That's why my knee needs to be pointed this way, and my head is pointed this direction. This is how I keep his shoulder away from me. Once I make those frames with my legs on his hips and his shoulder like this, it is going to be so hard time for him to stack me. Even though he tries to stack and try that, I can kick him away like in the leg press. He cannot even posture up as a clamping like this. Then I have made a dominant frame. The arms are completely locked. Then it's been isolated. Okay, now we are going to try how to finish. So in order to apply the pressure, I need to move my head to the other side. I want you to remember the first one. So something here. That means I need to play with the elbow more. But as long as I stay in this position, I don't have that much leverage. If I just only use my arm, that's not good enough. This time, I only can use my shoulder like side legs. Then he can close his elbow, means he has his lat, shoulders, bigger muscle than I can use it. So that's why from this position, I need to reach the far side in order to finish. So from this position, there's been several ways to do it, but let's just try one thing, super simple. I want to reach the far side arm in order to stop him and make more leverage to move myself. So from here, if you can find a person's shoulder around here, just copy a person's armpit like this. Then I have made a frame. Once it's done, it's getting easier for me to stay in front of him. Then from now, I use my head and leg like this. I start moving to the side. By the time it goes, I'm opening his elbow. Then there's gonna be a pressure on his shoulder. I show you once. So from this position, I keep my legs at the same spot. Then, as if I'm doing a hip escape. Then I can apply pressure here. Then as an option, if you find a space underneath your partner's armpit, you can scoop it in. Then finish. He may be get on his maybe leg like this. In that case, you can finish it here. It's been used a lot during the open guard. But somehow, you want to grab the far side. That's how you make the leverage to submit. Let's try one more. This is a very typical situation in terms of the center of Bharat Pratar. So the mount like this. So this situation, I want you to see that here. When he closes his elbows, like close, tuck his arms in like this, we cannot we find it difficult to isolate it. But on the other hand, we can find a space underneath your person's elbows. Now we can set up Bharat Prater, right? I just grab his wrist like this. And it's very similar to going to the S mount, but different things we can make stronger frame. Just get the hand in. Then if you can make Kimura lock, reverse Kimura lock, that's okay. But in this angle, it may be a little tough to do that. In that case, just need to grab your person's wrist like this. Somehow, you want to keep this structure until you step over a person's head like this. The next one is a toughest part in this technique. Similar to going to S mount, like you're going to keep it tight to stand it up. But good thing is, we don't need to focus on the match, open up his elbow, right? So here, as long as you keep it, it's fine. Even though I make space here, there's not much option for him to be able to escape. You can step over a person's leg, head, gradually like this. And once it comes, we got a position, like right about to lock your partner's frame. So before you lie down, actually the time I finish, I need to lie down. I get my arm deeper, like placing my elbow joint behind his elbow joint like this. And once it's done, I don't need to stay on the top position. Especially in terms of finishing bad pattern, it's a bit difficult to make leverage if we're on top. That's why from this position, we're going to lie down. Ready to scream. CC wants to escape from bad spot, especially from mount. Whenever he has a chance, he wants to come on top for sure, like this. This is the same as we have tried the last one. So adjust it. Then relax, right? In order not to get stuck. Head and leg here. Once you set up, find a far side. Just grab it like this. Once it goes, keep the all same structure. Then you apply the pressure. The time you apply the pressure, as if you're doing a hip escape. Right, that's been it. Please leave a like for algorithm. That's gonna be a big help to grow up my channel. 
and for upcoming videos don't forget to subscribe my channel and leave a comment down below like for what you think about thank you guys i'll you guys catch the next video bye